Next project, cab lights. This used to have a light advisor on it, but it was gone when I got it. And I found this one, but this one's not lighted. Now, one interesting note is that extended cab visors are specific to extended cab. Regular cab visors are specific to a regular cab. They're not interchangeable. And see here, this on this regular cab one, the cab, it's a lot steeper in the front here versus the uh, extended cabs. They're a real shallow drop all the way down, but anyway, whatever. Just an interesting note that the visors are not interchangeable between a regular and extended cab. Now, we all know that you can go to the auto parts store and get your El Cheapo cab lights for about three bucks, but uh, yeah, they're not the best. This has got, I put aftermarket ones on here when I redid this truck and I don't know, I think they look alright. They were like 50, 60 bucks for the set. I, I picked them because they kind of, sort of, are similar, I guess, to the OEM ones. I know the OEM ones face forward with the round lens, but just the way they swept up and were long and skinny like that, but I, I don't know, I like the chrome. In my opinion, you know, they're, they're still, they're alright, but they still are an aftermarket light. And after a few years, you can see little imperfections in the chrome where they're got a little kind of corrosion wanting to start. This one's kind of popped off its gasket, but they are what they are. But that in mind, and not wanting to try to, well, you can't get OEM cab lights for first gen anymore. And rather than trying to find a set of used ones, I found a set of ones for a second gen on the internet classifieds for 20 bucks for the whole set. So I just figured if they didn't go on here, they'd go on my dad's 96 or something. But turns out the, they actually do match the curve of this extended cab roof basically perfect. So I figured why not put them on here. So I just kind of, it's easy to kind of I am up with having a visor on here because you just kind of put one in the center and one on each side of it and one just inside on the outside and then I measured up from the drip edge to keep them the same and then yeah just straight edge across it and the three in the front are slightly forward or about an inch forward of the two that are more to the back and then I took a cut piece of an oil jug and made a template and when, with the lights on it, I made these sharpie marks because I figure it's easier just to sight it with the lights on and make sure everything looks right. And then I took that off and then I used my template to know where to make the holes just by lining that up with the marks. And the second gens, they're supposed to screw into these little square plastic blocks that go, it's the, you drill a bigger hole and you put this little square plastic block in there that the screw would actually go into. It's similar to uh, the way license plates usually mount, but I didn't get those little blocks with the screws, I just got the screws and I tried just drilling an eighth inch hole in the tin and that actually seems like it's going to work so I'm just going to leave it that way and then the center hole for the plug, I did that using a step bit, it's kind of a sawed off step bit, you can't start the hole with it, you got to have a hole started, but you only have so much length to go through here before you hit the headliner, you can only go in about, you know, an inch, maybe a little better, inch and some change. So, you can't really use a full length pointed bit. But, so I drilled it up to like a 13 16 hole because with the second gen lights, the way the sockets stick out of them, you gotta have a pretty big hole because the socket sticks below the bottom of the light. But anyway, so, yeah eighth inch and then 13 sixteenths with a step bit and if you just kind of play with the lights you know slide them up and down a little bit you'll, you'll find where there's a spot where they just they, they line up just perfect so then I used a piece of stiff wire here and I used it to snake my 
clad through and I'm just going to keep working my way over and then splicing it together under the lights as I go and then snake the left one down the pillar to hook them up and even though it is under the cab roof I'm still going to use those uh, weather tight heat shrink thingamajiggers under there just to make sure it stays together but I'm going to let you go and work on that a little bit and check back in in a few minutes. Anyway, great thing about these is you don't need to pull the headliner out. You just take this plastic off and you can snag it through. Pulling the headliner won't help anything because there's a, ted, a tin headliner above the cloth headliner, like in here. And this one, I just ended up, I drilled it right through and hindsight I probably should have taken more time and tried snaking it through but I got frustrated and just punched it all the way in but it happens but anyway so just snake it through and pull the plastic off of here and here and then run it down and hook her on and yeah I guess you, you probably noticed this when I got it it had a toggle switch for a headlight switch and that quit work and whatever melted down when I was going down the road once and I wasn't very far from one of my buddy's houses so I just stopped and I asked you got a switch? He says yeah I got a switch so we threw that in there and there we have it. I used some brake clean and rag to clean up the little sharpie marks I made Now, one note, if you don't have a light advisor, you just got the plain one, and you uh, still want cab lights, but the problem with doing this is they actually shine under the visor. And then when you're driving at night, I guess maybe you can see it in here, the whole underside of your visor is gonna glow amber. If you painted it flat black, Maybe it wouldn't be a huge deal. Yeah, the camera's kind of picking it up. But that's just an FYI if you try to do it that way.